This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in Glasgow, two days out. Josh Taylor defends his undisputed titles against Jack Cattrall. Uh, Jack Cattrall getting a shot at all four titles. Um, how is Jack? How is the mood in Team Cattrall? Uh, I'm sure you don't want the occasion to get the better of Jack, but we know he's a cool, calm customer. Yeah, of course. If, uh, if anyone's going to be able to deal with it and has got the temperament to deal with a situation like this, it's Jack. So... Um, so yeah, I've no, I've no worries or issues in that sense. I'm more worried about you keeping your pants up. To be fair, <laughs> if you stop pulling them down, then it be all right. Me. I didn't, Nigel. Down. I'm just, I, I'm sick of seeing your ass. To be honest, <laughs> one million impressions I've seen on Twitter. Just over, yeah, yeah. So, and, and building. Will anything beat Tommy Cole doing Eddie Earn though? I don't think so, but a lot of people are saying that's the best one yet. So it's. Big accolade that, mate. That is a massive accolade. Um, yeah, Jack's been in for huge accolades. Here. I mean. Most boxers dream of fighting for one title. Um, to get a shot at all four um, is, is quite something. Um, yeah, how, how do you see this firstly going with Josh Taylor? How do you read this fight? Well, well, like you say there, first first of all, it was one title. Then it was, should have been two. So Ramirez for both titles. And then and then he had the decision to make of, of does, he, does he risk allowing the, the fight to go ahead because everybody wanted to see the undisputed fight. Um, even though he's been promised the winner, will he get it? So uh, so it was a little bit of a risk. But Josh Taylor gave us his word that he, you know if he came through and won, he would honour it. And, and to be fair, he's, he's stuck to it. Um, the way I see the fight is, just first and foremost, Josh is a phenomenal fighter, without a doubt. You can't take anything away from him. Everything he's done in, the, in a short period of time, really, you know, he's, I think he's had 17 fights, 18 fights or whatever. He's, a, he's unbelievable what he's achieved. Um, Jack Carroll's never been given the opportunities that Josh has got. Um, probably wouldn't have been ready um, if he'd have got him sort of in the same time frame as what Josh has got him. So, so Josh, Josh was more advanced in his career. Jack turned pro much younger. Um, didn't have the same type of amateur background. But he's learned his, his trade in the pros. He's been a slow burner. Um, he's got a lot of experience. He's been around, sparred some of the best fighters to walk the planet. And, um, and you know, 10 years down the line, ten, after 10 years being a pro, he finds himself in a situation where he's, he's in there with one of the best fighters in the world. And, you know, Taking away from a, being involved in some high-end fights, he's probably got the most experience you could ever ask to to, to be prepared for something like that. So, um, so yeah, he's not he's not got those world-class opponents on his record. It doesn't mean he's not a world-class fighter himself. He's just never been given the opportunity to prove that yet. Is he going to have to mix it up in this fight? When I say that, is he going to have to at times? keep it long and, and try and figure out how to outbox Josh and at times when the opportunity presents itself to meet him in the middle ring and show that you know I can boss Josh Taylor too are you going to have to be versatile in this fight? Of course yeah and so is Josh Taylor you know Jack Carter has got to go and beat you know um, an undisputed champion at the same time Josh Taylor has got to come and beat Jack Carter um, you know, I see Josh mention about Jack's defences non-existent and stuff like that, and and if and it, I don't truly believe he thinks that. If he does, I don't know, I don't know what they've missed there. But for one, for one thing's for sure, Jack Carlo's defence is not non-existent. That's for for certain. Um, and you know, we've had a, a long time to prepare for this. We've we, we've made sure we've covered every base because we know. The problems what Josh will bring, um, the the high intensity. Um, he's got a great uh, boxing brain, good agility. Um, he's you give him a problem and he sort of seems to fix it quicker. So um, so you know so the, the stuff what we've the game plan we've had to implement is we've got to keep him guessing. We've got we've we've got to make sure that we don't sort of keep them patterns repeating because it, it'll work them out quite quickly. So um, you know. We've been been able we, that, the extra time the the delay in the fight has given given us more time to sort of just imprint those those little strategies and techniques what he needs to do imprint them in his brain more so than he would have done maybe in December so it's probably helps us out a little bit and um, it's, it's just all about him going in there now and implementing it.
You always maintain that Jack's a phenomenal fighter. Um, you've always talked about his worth, work ethic, which I'm sure is going to be dividend in this fight as well. Um, and also this extra time where you know you're going to box Josh and you've had that extra time to prepare for Josh. Um, that will all have to combine for a perfect performance from Jack. Um, but they say Josh Taylor is the complete fighter. Um, how do you assess Josh Taylor? Obviously, you're going to think there's chinks in his arm. How do you assess Josh Taylor? Is he the complete fighter at the moment in boxing? Well, yeah. He's it, 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 the, the complete fighter in the sense that does he carry power? Tick. Can he box on the back foot? Tick. Is he um, a, a world-class pressure fighter? Tick. Attributes in terms of height, reach, strength. Um, the, there's not an area where you call it a weakness. That doesn't mean he hasn't got vulnerabilities. You've got, that, so therefore, you have to have a fighter capable enough of exposing those vulnerabilities often enough, more often, than he gets exposed himself. And that's the key. For me, that's the key. Is I know how difficult it's going to be to... Um, Oh, how, how, how it will be to outwork Josh Taylor. Why would Jack Catterall try and outwork Josh Taylor? He has, to, he has to nullify what Josh is good at and then he has to take his opportunities when they're there because at this level, the higher up you go in level, the fewer mistakes the fighters make and the less opportunities you get. So Jack's, the key thing for Saturday night is, I, I know Josh won't have the same success as what he thinks he will, I feel. But then, just because he doesn't have that success doesn't mean that he doesn't get paid. And Jack needs to make sure that he makes him pay when he gets his opportunities. Okay. Is there a slight concern if it does go to the scorecards and it's a, a close-ish fight that you're not going to get any favours here in Scotland? There's always that concern. Um, and, you know, you'd like to think that you'd get a fair shake. Um, it is going to be difficult. The, the crowd always sways the judges. But you really, really can't allow that sort of thought or that talk in the in the gym in the training in the dressing rooms you, you can only worry about that after the fight because if you do if you do start to think about that or let that be a, a thought process it, it it would affect you so we, we you know up until we're in that ring and, and and the fight's over and we're waiting for the decision then i won't worry about that because you know this um i i'm, I'm i firmly believe that if jo if jack does exactly what he's been doing and what he's been drilling in the gym then he'll come out on top and then, if, and then you know fingers crossed we get a fair shake I know it's about the fighters not about the trainers but what is your relationship like with Ben? I don't really know Ben I've, I've, I've met him a couple of times every time I've seen him he's been polite and well mannered we've shook hands I've had a, we had a conversation in Las Vegas when Chantel was fighting over there in Las Vegas short conversation and uh, but yeah seems pleasant enough yeah Okay. Um, Josh admitted me earlier that you know Jack's um, record in terms of his knockout ratio doesn't even reflect uh, the power he carries. Obviously, you've seen him every day uh, for a long time up close. Josh said that. Yeah, Josh said that. How much power does Jack Cattrall carry? And is that a threat going into this fight for Josh? Yeah, Jack can whack, and um, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking Deontay Wilder type power. Um, obviously, because of his record, but you know, phys physically very strong, um, can can punch with both hands, and um, and I think one thing what is underestimated with Jack is um, that the computer inside his brain, um, from a boxing point of view, is phenomenal. Um, he seems to he ha he has this knack of controlling the tempo of a fight when the other fighter doesn't realise what he's doing. I've, I've, likened him, I've likened him to the, uh, the snake in the jungle book where he sort of hypnotises you and he, and he be, without you even understanding or realising, he's controlling the tempo. And you can see some fighters, good fighters, and then they, sort, they sort of shake themselves off and snap out of them and, and, and then they, they sort of try and force him into doing stuff. And that's going to be the shifting point in the fight, I feel, on Saturday is... Josh, Josh, Josh is an intelligent fighter himself. He'll realise what's going on, and then he'll force himself on Jack. And then that'll be the point where it's like sink or swim, because if if Jack can make a dent in Josh, or at least get his respect, then then I don't think that'll be the, the end of it, because Josh is 
he's a tough bastard. So he'll keep coming and keep going. That's when it's going to get interesting. Well, you said yourself, Josh is a tough bastard. Uh, what about Jack? Does he know that at times he's going to have to go to dark places in this fight? And you know him mentally, can he, can he sustain that and then push on? Yeah, well, listen, he's never been put in that position in a professional boxing ring. So, but I have seen him dog it out numerous times in sparring. But fighting and sparring is a different thing. Temperament-wise, do I think he's, he's in him? Absolutely. Um, and it's a mental thing. You know, from, from, I'm, I'm an ex-fighter myself. And knowing when you've not been in, the, in, in a dogfight before, before you go into it, you sort of do think to yourself, am I going to be able to do it? It's more about your mindset. It's not... What, what, by nature, we're all tough bastards to be fighters in the first place. Why do we do it? You know, what makes us decide to be a fighter in the first place? But to, 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 to go through a really difficult fight, it's about your, your mental strength and your recovery. That, you know, <laughs> I think it was Paulie Malinaji once said, the fitter you are, the braver you are. And that is never a truer statement. If you, if you know that, you know, you're running on empty, but it's near the end of the round and you know you're going to get a minute's rest and you know that throughout the last three months every time you're 30 40 seconds into your minute's rest you're recovered and you know you're ready to go again you get confidence in yourself and um and jack Carroll, i've you know never by, by any stretch of the imagination have i seen him as conditioned as they have for this fight and rightly so because we know the type of engine he's going to need against josh are you using the whole England-Scotland thing as a bit of extra fire? You're walking into the Lions then, underdog, away so Josh has completely shut it down. He's saying he's got more fans coming than Jack from England. He's got a, a global fan base. He said it's got nothing to do with Scotland and England. Have you discussed that a little bit? Are you using that for a little bit more fire or not? No, not at all. Is it England v Scotland? Well, it's obviously, it's obviously England v Scotland and I think it's only on paper. I think... You know, from, from, from my point of view, and this is me from a personal point of view, it's a British thing. Um, I support any fighter who comes from, from Britain full stop. So, so we're in the lines then in terms of um, uh, Josh's hometown. I don't see it as an England-Scotland thing. I just see it, this is where he, he lives and this is not where Jack lives. That's the only thing. OK, well, listen, best of luck this Saturday with Jack Cattrall. Obviously, you're hoping for and the new. Just uh, away from this to close off the interview, want to get your um, thoughts on Calm Brook how the fight played out and also should both men retire well first of all I thought it was a great fight I thought it was um, obviously it was later than everyone wanted it to be but nevertheless it lived up to everyone's expectations and I think it was more evident than that Khan had more miles on the clock than Kel and also size was a big factor um, I may seem to his coordination was a little bit off and inactivity and, and like I say um, you know, he's had a lot of tough fights, I'm here. Whereas Kel seemed a little bit fresher, um, sharper. He, he's, he's, his timing was really spot on. I, I, I wondered whether it would still be there. But from the first round, his timing was spot on. So, um, so do, do I think they should both retire? Yeah. I think in an ideal world, everybody always goes one to fight too far. And I think what a perfect way for Kel Brook to walk away and, and finish his career. But the temptation of a of a big, you know, two, three, four million pound payday um, to secure his family's future, you know, I don't know his situation. I think, you know, I'm pretty confident his his future's secured anyway. But um, but you know, who's to say that he doesn't want to give it that extra bit of cushion? But in an ideal world, I'd love I'd love for him to walk off into the sunset with his family healthy. Um, from a mayor Khan's point of view, he's got nothing more to prove. He's had, he's had 40 fights. I think I have read that he said he'd had 40 fights and then he'd walk away. And again, you know, I seen a picture on Instagram yesterday with, with him and his family and the kids, and and that's what it's all about. You know, we all have these ambitions of doing stuff in boxing and achieving what we can achieve. But at some point, the risk reward has got to balance. It's got it's got to make it worthwhile. And now it seems to me like for both fighters. The risk and reward doesn't balance now. They've got the rewards. They've, they've, they've safeguarded what they needed to do. And now they can, they can afford to walk away. And, and they've left a, a brilliant legacy, both of them. I, I, I think Amir Khan, more so than Kelly even, his, his, his resume over the, over the last 10 years is fantastic. I don't think he gets enough credit uh, what he deserves. And, um, and, and he, he's a British boxing legend.
I think both of them are. And, uh, got two men on Saturday looking to do the same thing. Listen, best of luck with Jack uh, at the Hydro this Saturday night and we'll speak after the fight. Jamie, all right? Cheers, mate. Thank you.